ladies and gentlemen, I am Dr. Claudia Elbers, Planet X Research and Professional Physicist. And today I'd like to bring to you another one of my articles. This one's entitled Black Hole, Simulated and Pretend It Actually Exists. Now, there have been recent reports of astronomers taking photographs of a black hole. A black hole is defined as a star which, as it has run out of energy, i.e. it becomes unable to have thermonuclear reactions, which are supposedly what stops a star from gravitationally collapsing. It collapses into an extremely dense point object with an event horizon around it, beyond which even light cannot escape. However, this scenario is dependent on everything in the universe being driven by gravitational collapse and stars being powered by thermonuclear reactions in the course. But if stars are powered by thermonuclear reactions, then the sun must also be powered by thermonuclear reactions. But then how is it possible that the sun goes dark? If the sun is powered by thermonuclear reactions in its core, then light and energy should be flowing from deep inside the sun all the time, and it would be impossible for it to go dark. But the sun does go dark, and these are images from the last SDO eclipse season of 2017, and they are four minutes apart. So this is what the sun uh, looked like at this time, 7.04, and this is four minutes later. And four minutes later, uh, it's about half dark. And according uh, to the accepted explanation, this is due to an eclipse. But if this was an eclipse, then we would have the Earth, which here is approximated by this triangle, covering the sun, so that only this part above the Earth would be seen, and this part would not be seen. Is this what this image looks like? It clearly is not. And you can see this is the curvature of the Earth in comparison with the Sun. You can see it's almost a straight line. So it can be uh, approximated by this triangle. But as you can see, this triangle only covers this part here, the bottom part here. It cannot cover anything above here. But then what happened to the corona here? It's only four minutes apart. What happened to that piece of the corona? It should still be there. It should, the corona should only be covered up to here. So there should be corona there. But we don't see corona there. What happened was the corona has actually shrunk back. And you can see if you look at all the images on the first day of the eclipse season, you can see it more clearly. You can see the corona shrinking back. In the next image, it will be shrunk back to almost nothing up there. Because the sun is actually going dark. It's not being covered, so it's not an eclipse. The sun does go dark. And you Look at Article 3, 2, 4 for more details. Since the sun can go dark as the above images show, then the sun cannot be powered by thermonuclear reactions in its core, and stars cannot form through gravitational collapse. This is because since the sun cannot be powered by thermonuclear reactions, which are supposed to stop it from collapsing, and the sun obviously did not gravitationally collapse, then gravitational collapse cannot occur. And if gravitational collapse does not occur, then black holes cannot form, because it takes gravitational collapse for a black hole to form. Instead, the exact opposite of gravitational collapse happens. The planet X objects, which have been coming into the solar system for thousands of years as comets, are cores of their planets and stars, and they are energy depleted, which makes their gravitational effects extremely weak. Some of these objects are much larger than the Sun. We thus have dead stars' cores that have not gravitationally collapsed, even though they are low in energy. And instead, the gravitational fields were severely reduced, which is the exact opposite that should have occurred if black holes were possible. And you can see some of these objects. This one was about seven times larger than the sun. That's in terms of diameter or radius. And the, the sun size is defined by its wide triangle on the occult of the Sea's Alaska C2 image. And you can see that this object is extremely close to the sun because you can see the reaction from the sun. And this is plasma coming from the sun. It's basically a CME because these objects provoke the sun into having CMEs. And this obviously was a very large, very low energy object. So energy flows, and that's what causes the CME from the sun's core towards this object. And you can see some of this plasma is actually in front of the object here. So we know that it was very, very close to the sun. Seven times larger than the sun, and it's the core of a star. And since, according to accepted theory, a star's core is only 20% of its size, of the size of that star, the star would have been 35 times larger than the sun 
when it was a living star. And that means that it would have been 43,000 times more massive than the Sun. Because the mass is given by um, 35 times cube, it's given by the radius cubed, it's given by this equation. Where rho is density and then 4 thirds pi r cubed, that's the volume, so we have an r cubed there. So we have to cube 35 and we get 43,000 times. So this star should have become a black hole, surely, when it ran out of energy, when it became a dead star. But instead, it lost its outer layers and the core remained the same size. Here's another one. This one, this tail, of course, about the same size as the sun. That means that it would have been once a star five times larger than the sun, which means that it would have had a mass 125 times more than the sun's mass. So it should, too, have become a black hole. But here you are. Here we have dead stars that did not become black holes and should have become black holes according to accepted theory. What does that tell you? Black holes do not exist. It Now, these are stereo B images from 2007, which show one of these stellar cores, planet X system stellar cores, traversing the sun in the sun's corona. And the object can be seen entering the corona, and we can see it entering the corona because you can see the red light that the corona is emitting, or it looks red in this image. This is actually ultraviolet light, but it looks red in this image. You can see part of the corona that's in front of the object as it enters. And then here it's almost completely inside the corona, here it's inside the corona. You can see it start to exit the corona, because you can see part of the object against the background of the corona that's behind it. The object is black where there is no corona, it's red where there is corona because there's corona in front of it or between the surface of the object and the detector. So this object traversed the sun in 2007, it was very close to the sun, so we can estimate its size was 2.2 times the size of Jupiter, and it took 10 hours to traverse the sun, which means that it was traveling at about 39 kilometers per second, or at a much lower speed than the sun's escape velocity, which should have made it impossible for it to ever have left the sun. So this indicates that it has a very weakened capacity to gravitationally interact. That's what happens with these objects. They're very weak gravitationally because they're energy depleted. So they don't, they don't have infinite gravity like black holes or dead stars are supposed to have. According to astronomical theory, it would be impossible for a celestial object to come this close to the sun and not collide with it. And the object is clearly inside the sun's corona because light from the corona, which appears as red in this image, is seen in front of the object. And the object is even seen entering and exiting. And as I said, the object moves at a speed which is much lower than the sun's escape velocity. So this means that what happened here is impossible according to accepted astronomical theory. Which only means that accepted theory is wrong. Because we have a clear observation of something happening, which according to that theory is impossible. So that falsifies. theory. So where did the photograph of the black hole come from? The Earth's skies are being simulated as I show in articles 723 and 725. So if the sun, the moon, and all the planets, and indeed the whole sky are being simulated, can anyone expect the simulation to stop at that? Why wouldn't the powers that be also simulate astronomical photographs of objects that do not and cannot exist? And here's the evidence that the sky is a simulation. So you can see these are two photographs from a wet camera in Montreux. This is at 10 a.m. This is what the sky looked like at 10 a.m. It was January uh, 14th, but the sun should have come up by at least 7 a.m. This is what it looked like at 8.40. As you can see, there's a shooting star in the sky that's in exactly the same position. It's not the only star that's in the same position. There are others. Exactly the same position. There are differences between the photographs, though. 
The cloud here is different, the thickness is different, there are other differences that can be found, but the most dramatic is that the sky is not actually exactly the same. The stars are in exactly the same position, the stars that can be seen in both, but there are extra stars in this photograph. There's one there that's not there. There's two there that are not there. There's one here that's not there. So clearly the sky is not exactly the same, but the stars are in the same position. 10 a.m. and 8.40. So the camera obviously took the photograph. The sky was frozen. It was not moving. The only way that's possible is if the sky is a simulation. So the sky is being simulated. And here's a photograph of that black hole and a photograph of, therefore, a simulated black hole in the simulated sky. So in conclusion, it is impossible for black holes to exist. So the photograph of a black hole cannot be anything more than a simulation of something that does not exist. The powers that be are terrified of the truth. They are terrified of the truth regarding planet X and regarding how the universe really works. And so they simulate what they want and pretend that it actually exists.